Salutations, uh, respected viewers, or should I say, Yakida. I'm George from Ireland, and I'm, I'm standing in front of Henry Morton Stanley's house. Perhaps behind me, in the distance, in between the bars, you can see the little blue circle. That's a blue plaque to mark uh, Henry Morton Stanley's uh, house. Um, I'm in London, in the Westminster area. Whitehall is just that away, the street with all the government ministries on it, and uh, the River Thames is not 100 yards yonder. Um, the Ministry of Defence is that away, but um, I shan't film it for reasons you might guess. Well, they don't think there's actually a law against it. Come on, thousands of people walk past it every day very easily to covert film. Uh, so, so Stanley, he was born in uh, Wales and his name was originally John Rowlands and he was born out of side of holy matrimony, which in those days um, was um, uh, considered disgraceful. Obviously it reflects no discredit on him or indeed his parents, but back then it carried a severe stigma. So he's brought up in a workhouse, sort of an orphanage, like an Oliver Twist situation. And when he was an adolescent, uh, he um, emigrated to the United States. He landed at New Orleans and uh, um, he uh, was taken in by um, a middle-aged man uh, called Mr. Stanley. And so uh, John Rowlands changed his name to Henry Morton Stanley in honor of this man who was a father figure to him. Uh, I don't think there's anything untoward about their relationship, but I could be mistaken. So anyway, um, Henry Morton Stanley, as he was known thenceforth, uh, he volunteered for the Confederate Army during the American Civil War. He fought in that cause and um, he continued to have uh, anti-black attitudes throughout his life. But um, such uh, despicable racism was not uncommon at the time um, throughout the white world. So that was over and then he made his, his name as a newspaper man writing for the um, uh, International Herald Tribune, various New York newspapers. Um, anyway, the proprietor of these um, sent him to Africa because Dr. David Livingston was um, a celebrated figure at the time. He was such a celebrity for bringing the Bible to the benighted heathen of Africa, as they would have seen at the time, traveling around what's now um, Zimbabwe, uh, Zambia, into what's now um, uh, Tanzania, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and so forth. So people had lost, uh, lost contact with Dr. Livingston for some time. So um, uh, Stanley, he sailed to um, what's now Tanzania, he was also on the island, well, the island of Zanzibar is part of Tanzania now, and uh, he befriended Tipu Tip. Um, now, Tipu Tip uh, was from that part of the world, a Swahili speaking man, uh, a Muslim. Now, a lot of people in the interior were not Muslims, but um, some Muslims held it was entirely acceptable to abduct and, and uh, um, enslave uh, people who were not of the faith. Obviously, Christians had done the same, occasionally, down to other Christians as well, so whether they're infidels. Well, we can just uh, reduce them to thraldom. Anyhow, so he relied on Tipu Tip to get the interior because you know he had the men, he had the guns, the contacts, all the rest of it. So using his guides and bearers to carry all their all their necessaries, they ventured deep into the interior of Africa, which then people would not have uh, blushed to call the Dark Continent. Anyway, so after a couple of years. Um, He'd heard on the Bush Telegraph that Dr. Livingston was around and he walked into a village where he saw a rather drawn and elderly white man. There wasn't another white within a hundred miles of there. And um, uh, Stanley greeted him with the immortal words, Dr. Livingston, I presume. So that was that. So uh, it was a sensation. It was a scoop. Obviously, it took some weeks to get back to the coast and to telegraph uh, the news to the United States and the story broke. But however, um, Livingston died shortly after meeting Stanley. Um, I think he was, his heart was removed and the rest of him was buried where he died and his heart was brought back by two of his faithful servants to, to the United Kingdom. He's buried, he's buried in Westminster Abbey, if, if I've got that right. So obviously Livingston is memorialised. There's a, there's a town in, um, in Zambia which still bears his name. Um, Blantyre in Malawi is after his area of Scotland. Um, I know there's a town in Scotland called Livingston, but um, Livingston's family take their name from the town. It's not the Scots town takes its name from Dr. Livingston. And Ken Livingston, the um, uh, ultra-left uh, British politician, so far as I know, is no relation, even collaterally, of um, uh, the physician. Um, so that was that. So Stanley, he went back to the United States. He eventually returned to his uh, native land, but came back in triumph. He was um, a self-made man, and uh, he entered uh, politics. He um, joined the Liberal Unionists. So the Liberal Party split in 1886 over the issue of Home Rule for Ireland. So the um, majority of the Liberal Party under William Gladstone was in favour of uh, 
devolving government to Ireland, um, and Ireland still remembering remaining part of the United Kingdom, very similar to Scotland's current status within the United Kingdom. And then about a third of the party decamped, led by a radical Joe Chamberlain, um, the Marquess of Hartington and others, and they became liberal unionists, and they uh, acted um, as uh, uh, allies of uh, the Conservative Party. So the liberal unionists and the Conservatives eventually merged just before the First World War to be known as um, Conservative and Unionists, often their centre is called Unionist. But anyway, so he was a liberal unionist MP, and so this house is very convenient for him because he's only half a mile from Parliament. You can't see Parliament, but it'd be behind that building there. Um, so he died shortly after the turn of the century. That is him, but some, many people regard him as a charlatan, as a shameless self-publicist, but he certainly pulled himself up by his bootstraps. He, he started with the most impropitious beginnings in life, but uh, ascended to um, great fame and consequences as a dint of his endeavors. That's enough about Henry Morton Stanley.